Um, it's my pleasure to introduce our new, our, our first speaker, Steve Silverstone. Steve is the EVP of marketing with Boston Pizza. Um, Steve is a marketer's marketer. Uh, his impressive background includes stops at P&G, Pepsi, Labatt, a turn in the agency world at Cassette, um, and he's been with Boston Pizza now for about four years. Is that right, Steve? Um, from renaming the chain during the hockey playoffs to establishing the Flatties and Drummies Association to the joy of finger cooking, um, Steve has clearly fostered a culture of marketing innovation, but with a tight focus on the core dad customer um, that, that, that they're going after. Steve's going to talk to us today about driving loyalty through great relationships. Um, if Steve seems a little bit distracted, um, he's probably uh, a little unused to the rarefied Aries in these days. So you'll see on his bio that he identified himself as a Habs fan, and it's not often he got the Habs sitting at the top of the leaderboard. So. Yeah. Um, I'm sure that given how understated most Habs fans are, Steve never would have mentioned that in his presentation. Um, so uh, I thought I'd throw him a, a bone that way. So without further ado, Steve. Thanks, Kevin. The, uh, I appreciate the uh, reference to, uh, to the Habs and the fact that, well, you didn't mention that they're in first place overall, but, uh, and, and I wasn't going to mention that, but since you brought it up. Uh, so uh, when Terrapin uh, called to talk to me about presenting at a uh, big data and big loyalty uh, session, I, uh, I thought, okay, my first thought was, well, did Air Miles put you up to this? Because uh, we are an Air Miles partner. We've been a partner, uh, a part of the Air Miles Coalition for the past 20 years. Because I said, well, while we've been a partner of Air Miles, it doesn't really feel like we focus in on, 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 on loyalty as, as much as maybe, maybe we could. And then we started to think a little bit about it. And I thought what I'd share today is essentially what I think the future of loyalty looks like, which is evolving from a position of transactions Right, really talking about transactions and points for transactions and increasing transactions to really, I think, what we all try to get to as, as marketers, as providers of, of loyalty programs, as providers of information, which is building trust with, with our guests. I was speaking to uh, somebody from Teradata earlier this morning, and, uh, and what we were talking about was the level of expectation that the consumer has when they're dealing with you day in, day out, whether it be an email asking you to sort of respond or, or sign up for something, whether it's your customer service organization, whether it's your loyalty program, but there's a level of customer expectation that is not only the expectation is as high as your best performing part of your business, but it's consistent throughout all businesses. And the email that you get from Lululemon is going to be judged by the email that you get from Boston Pizza. It's going to be judged by the email that you get from Aeroplan. And they all need to be at a very high level. So I'm going to talk about how we build trust. And I, hopefully there's some insights. Uh, there will be a Q&A period following the uh, presentation. So I encourage you if there's something you wanted to know about Boston Pizza but never knew who to ask, I guess I would be the guy today. So... Uh, I do first want to start by uh, talking a little bit about who is Boston Pizza and specifically our approach to loyalty and how, how we see loyalty. And then I'm going to give a little bit of a glimpse to the future. Kevin sort of previewed it with a, with a slide that I have in my presentation, but we're going to talk a little bit about where the future is going and it's as much of you to the future as it is a look back to where we've come from. I would also be remiss if I didn't say a lot of the success that, that Boston Pizza is having, I want to sort of thank a few folks, uh, is due to, I'm fortunate that I work with an all-star team, some of them are, are here today, uh, within my department, as well as uh, with our advertising agency, Taxi, and partners like Air Miles, who provide a lot of leadership and have built the brand to where, to where it is today. So I want to recognize uh, that group that's in, uh, in the audience. They're really the result of a lot of what you're going to see, uh, see today. The other part that I want to highlight is typically when I show up and uh, it talks about Boston Pete's on the agenda, the first thing running through people's mind is, how come you couldn't get Jim? How come you couldn't get Jim to come out to the presentation? So Jim does send, uh, Jim does send his regards. Jim's uh, involved in, in the business. Jim runs our U.S. business, which is about 40 restaurants. He's based out of Dallas. He's, uh, he would have loved to have been in Toronto today for a nice, crisp, sort of sunny day in Toronto, but he is in Palm Springs, so he sends his regards. Just to give some background as to Boston Pizza in terms of our size and, uh, and our brand, we are Canada's largest and only national 
casual dining brand. So we're in every single province. We're in places like Weyburn, Saskatchewan, and obviously downtown Toronto at Front and John. But we are coast to coast and represented throughout, uh, throughout the country. We're 350 restaurants strong. We are a Canadian-based organization, so we our humble beginnings, uh, we started in Edmonton, Alberta. So our founder, uh, Gus Agiotis, he was a Greek immigrant to Canada. He loved Boston, and that's the true reason why uh, he named, the, named it Boston. It was actually called Boston Pizza and Spaghetti House over 50 years ago. And he focused on offering a core offering of great pizza and great pasta uh, as he built uh, as he built his brand, the brand has since grown to over 900 million in system sales. Again, coast to coast, there's 350 restaurants in Canada, fit, about 40 in the U.S., and we've just entered uh, the Mexican market. And the brand continues to grow. We continue to find small communities coast to coast that allow us and give us the opportunity to introduce uh, Boston Pizza as sort of the core concept. I think what's important to know about, about the brand is that it is two concepts under one roof. So the challenge in our target, Kevin referenced that we do try to speak to uh, dads, but the, chal- the challenge in our target is that we have a, a welcoming family restaurant targeted to dad and families, and then we have a separate experience in our sports bar really targeted to dudes. So dads and dudes are kind of our two core focuses, and we all know that there's times when you have the responsibility of family. I have two young kids, and you want your family to have a great experience. You want your wife to be happy. You want the kids to eat. Happy wife, happy life. And that's very important in that we deliver a welcoming experience inside our, inside our dining rooms where we make sure that the guest feels very comfortable. Our point of difference is a level of comfort that uh, you don't see anywhere. So you can wear... Louis Vuitton, right through to Lululemon, and you're going to feel welcome at Boston Pizza. On the sports bar, it's a bit of a different story. So we want to provide a lively sports bar experience. So whether you're cheering for the Canadians, cheering for the Leafs, you want to watch a round of golf, uh, our positioning on sports bars, any sport from any screen, you can watch it at Boston Pizza. So we try to provide that lively experience for dad when he's a dude, he wants to hang out with the guys either after a game of rec hockey, grab a beer, and enjoy, uh, enjoy his favorite sporting event. And that really is what uh, solidifies our point of difference. We have three pillars that ground our business. And as we talk about sort of a vision towards building trust in, into the brand, this is what grounds us day in, day out. And as, again, as Kevin said, I've worked for a number of organizations, and I would say what makes Boston Pizza relatively unique is that we are really grounded in these three principles. We are a franchise organization. So that means that there is an independent owner of each and every Boston Pizza restaurant, with the exception of three. We use those three for training and uh, uh, innovation and research. But with the exception of three, there's a specific owner for the Boston Pizza. And that owner is very important. That owner has put a lot of money forward, probably around $2 million, to build a Boston Pizza. And we want to make sure that that owner is profitable. So when we talk about loyalty and we talk about information and, and, and investing in programs, that owner has a very important say. Second is we're very committed to building the Boston Pizza brand from an investment standpoint and from a development standpoint. So despite the fact that we're Canada's largest brand, we look for communities where, you know, 4,000 people in Canada, where maybe they're, you know, the restaurant market is not as well developed from a, from a brand standpoint, and we enter that market and we become the big show in town. Because you really only need, you know, a couple hundred people per day to fill that restaurant and make it interesting. So 4,000 people actually becomes interesting when you're the only player in town. Then finally, we have a commitment to exceed our guest expectations and continually improve the guest experience. And this is an important one as it grounds us in our transactions and evolving transactions to building, to building trust. And we bring it all together with a promise to our guests that we're here to make you happy. So whether you're with your family, enjoying a nice meal with the kids, or you're on the sports bar side, having a few beers, some wings with your friends, our goal is to, uh, to make you happy. So what is our approach to loyalty? So I'll talk a little bit about uh, loyalty and how we see it evolving towards the future. So as I said, we have, been, uh, we have some traditional touch points in the business. We've been an Air Mile sponsor since uh, 1993. We uh, also listen. 
So we have a uh, very strong infrastructure built around listening to our guests through various customer feedback channels, uh, whether it's everything from Yelp right through to you know, monitoring Facebook. And we listen with an intent to respond. So I know if for those people that have done uh, sort of training or development around active listening, you're not necessarily supposed to listen with an intent to respond. You're supposed to listen and then respond. But we listen with an intent to respond to look for opportunities to connect with guests to further solidify our relationships. And then one of our biggest emerging opportunities is around bostonpizza.com and online ordering. And we went into the online ordering business. We established finger cooking as a promise for takeout and delivery. We see it as a discrete occasion where the guest doesn't have time to come visit our restaurants. But that gives us the opportunity to start to build out our data infrastructure, start to understand how we go from transactions, online orders, to understanding what guests like what they don't, so that we can then mine that data to build further, further trust and further uh, transactions into our online ordering process. I will use the word guess throughout the presentation. I hope that's not confusing. We call our consumer or customer guess uh, because uh, that's what you are when you come to visit us at the restaurant. So hopefully that's relatively clear. But what really what we're trying to do is we strive for brand affinity, right? And, and we think the important opportunity is to create an emotional connection with our brand that's grounded on excellent food, right? That's the number, number one driver in our category, an amazing experience that ultimately lead us to deliver heartfelt, data-informed communications, and data informed, I don't want all the, because I'm, I'm terrified of big data, so I don't want all the big data people out there to sort of get excited about sort of the role of, da data for us is throughout the business. So it's data that we work with uh, Air Miles on understanding who our most loyal, mid-loyal, and least loyal uh, guests are. But it's data that we look at in our transactions, in our weekly sales, what's selling, what's not, how we deliver uh, an inspiring menu. And then we try to be remarkable in all of our communications around that. So this is our recipe for loyalty. And hopefully this inspires others in the room to, to think a little bit about loyalty a little bit differently. So what we believe is that first and foremost, you need to provide an excellent product. So Apple is, you know, for us a great example. It's rooted, you know, if, if, if the Apple products weren't as amazing and, and interactive and intuitive as they were, uh, we don't think you know, Apple would be as successful. We look at that in the same way as it relates to our product, which is essentially our food, which is our culinary experience. Secondly, an excellent experience. So uh, my wife is very loyal to Shoppers Drug Mart, for if there's any Shoppers folks in the room. Uh, very loyal to Shoppers Drug Mart, and uh, part of it is Optimum their loyalty program, but a bigger part of it is the in-store experience that they deliver. The more frequently she visits is directly correlated with how bad her day is going. When she's having a really bad day, she goes to shoppers because that's like an oasis. It's like an escape. She walks the makeup aisles, she walks the, and she loves shoppers. That product experience is what makes, we think, the uh, programs like Optimum run. Our product experience is what we provide to our guests. Relevant listening. So Amazon for us would be a good model on relevant listening, a, a brand that understands through the transactions that you're making what's important to you and what's not important to you. And they follow up with very specific recommendations and very specific customer service insights to make sure that your needs are being met. And then finally, heartfelt communications. I think you know, Disney would roll it all up as an example of, of a brand for us that you know, sort of puts it all together and connects with you emotionally and tries to uh, strike an emotion. We try to do that by putting everything together and connecting with our guests. And I'll talk to you a little bit about how we do that. We first start with a restaurant decision hierarchy, and we look at what's important to our guest when they're deciding to go out to eat. So we've all been there. It's the moment of truth. It's 5 o'clock. Uh, I assume there's people behind that column. I apologize that you might be left out of this. But at 5 o'clock in, in the afternoon, you get home from work, and the discussion happens. It's that classic discussion, what's for dinner? Right? And, you, and you say, okay, well, what's for dinner? And then, and then the mind works very quickly to sort out a bunch of options. Well, are we dining in or, or we're going out? Let's figure that out. 
If we're staying in, okay, are we going to cook or are we going to order takeout and delivery? So that has a different path to purchase for us on the consumer decision hierarchy than if you're actually going out. For us, very important is top of mind. So we strive to be top of mind. And if you think about it, when, that, when you have that discussion, when you're thinking about what's for dinner and you decide that you're either going to order takeout and delivery or you're going to go out to eat, very quickly, two or three brands will pop into your head. Right? We hope that we're one of those brands. We hope that, it's one, that we're one of those brands. Usually it's going to be a couple of national brands or regional brands, and then it'll usually be a local independent, somebody that you're familiar with that, that'll pop up. Our goal is to be one of those brands. And then there's a whole bunch of factors that I would love to be able to say we understand intimately the specific correlation to the decision, but we don't. But we try to make sure that we have an answer for each of the factors. So what do I want to pay? What do I feel like eating? What does my family and friends want? How was my last experience? All of that weighs in how much time do I have? Weighs into the decision criteria. With this framework, we feel like we're in the best position to go forward and then market the guest based on understanding the process that they go through to decide which restaurant they're going to go eat. But we do start with what our top drivers are. And our top driver around loyalty is the quality of our food. The better the quality of the food, the more loyal the guest is going to be. The specific you know, strategy, just to give you a bit of an inside, inside scoop, is that you know, as we go again from building transactions to trust, is that elevating our food quality was a key mandate that started you know, many years ago. And, and the goal was that, you know, the issue that we had is that we were known for amazing pizza, coast to coast. But when you spoke to guests and what they said through all of our channels of communication, because we were listening, was that your chicken wings suck. And they said that. They said, you've got the worst chicken wings, not only in restaurants in Canada, but potentially in the world. <laughs> so we said, okay, well, we need to, we need to reinvent our chicken wings. We need, so we, coincident with the, with the advertising, we introduced a larger wing. We bread them. We bake them. We fry them. 14 different sauces, and we made our product more interesting. Because historically, we were looking at chicken wings as a transaction, and we saw the opportunity to build trust by having a better product, and then obviously talking about it, and talking about how great they were. But in the spirit of everything working together, if the product didn't deliver, the advertising would be an overpromise. The second most important driver in our business is experience. So experience is critical uh, to the point where if you have a bad experience but the food is outstanding, you will likely give the restaurant a second chance. But if you have consecutive or, or consecutive bad experiences, you start to erode trust. And I would argue along the continuum of building transactions to trust, consistency of experience is probably the biggest enabler, biggest disabler. And it's a huge challenge in our, rest, in our business because we have a franchise organization, and we're dependent on 10,000 people across Canada to deliver that consistent experience, day in, day out, transaction after transaction. So we promise around our we make promises around our experience and promote it uh, using messaging. So the uh, the experience that we promise is, particularly in the sports bar, is a lively experience that's also very safe. Uh, we get a lot of feedback from wives and girlfriends where they actually like when the guys say that they're going to Boston Pizza relative to other alternatives because they feel like it's a very safe environment and that's what we try to bring to life. And we deliver on that experience because the insight that it's rooted in is when, when we speak to guests coast to coast, what they say is that our servers smile more, they're more natural, they're friendlier, and uh, they make you feel more comfortable. And we try to deliver that promise day in, day out. So the question now is, well, what about loyalty? So if food is key at driving loyalty, and experience is critical to solidifying uh, the move from transactions to trust, well, what role does building traditional loyalty play at Boston Pizza? So I do go back 100 years to the, to the shopkeeper, to the general store. And in a time where there wasn't a lot of competition, the general store owner carried a variety of goods and services and, and products. And the general, the general store owner knew your family, 
knew when you were probably doing a little bit of you know, renovation or work around the house, probably knew who you were having over for dinner for that day. The general store owner probably knew your kids. We look at it as the opportunity is for our restaurants, our franchisees, our general managers in each and every restaurant coast to coast to be the general store owner. And traditionally what our franchisees and general store owners have done is they've reached out of the store to drive sales and increase transactions, but to build a relationship towards trust. So going, speaking to schools and, and providing hot lunch programs. Sports teams, having sports teams come into Boston Pizza, to come visit, building a relationship with coaches and conveners across, uh, across the country. Local businesses has been another source of, of, of the opportunity to grow and build relationships. Uh, meeting with the Chamber of Commerce to try to draw business in. And then finally, the Boston Pizza Foundation. So the Boston Pizza Foundation has raised over $14 million over the last 20 years. Uh, we're right now we're at a role where we're raising about $2 million a year. Our primary beneficiaries are uh, the Hardened Stroke Foundation, Kids Help Phone, Juvenile Diabetes. And the Boston Pizza Foundation becomes our philanthropy message within the community. But all of those, schools, sports teams, charity, that's all reaching out. And we believe the opportunity is to start to look from within and to start by really listening to our guest at the point of purchase inside the restaurants. So we talked about monitoring uh, social media. We have over 500,000 uh, people in our, in our email database that we speak to regularly. We've started to uh, engage them in surveys and, and questionnaires to be able to understand what their wants and needs are. But we see that as an important part of building the relationship because that sends a message to our guests saying, you care about what I think. And with that caring, you're going to come visit Boston Pizza. We have a real opportunity as it relates to online ordering and transactions that happen through our point of sale terminals coast to coast to mine the data. So we're looking to build a data mart to understand item level, check level transactions to understand what's important, like Amazon. What's important to our guests when they come in? What do they typically eat? And depending on who they're with, what are they eating and what are they doing? Are they coming into the sports bar to watch a hockey game? Or are they visiting Boston Pizza with their family to have a great experience as a family? And we believe this simple visual is the key to the future. So with 50% smartphone penetration, 50, 60, depending on who you speak to, we believe that mobile technology is the enabler that will allow our franchisees, our general managers, each and every Boston Pizza restaurant across Canada to connect with the guests one-to-one to be able to influence and be able to establish a relationship that takes the transaction and starts to build trust as it did 100 years ago. So that is our view for where we believe loyalty and big data come together. So we, as we look forward, we look back, and we hope to have that same relationship with our storekeeper and with all of you going into the future. So thank you very much.